In this video and the next, we're going to be discussing Achilles tendon pathologies. And in general, these can be termed Achilles tendinopathies. So anytime you use the term tendinopathy, it's a very general umbrella term. So if you say this patient, they've got a tendinopathy, you're really not being very descriptive. A tendinopathy is just any dysfunction, damage, injury, pathology of a tendon. And of course, throwing Achilles in front of it, it refers to the Achilles tendon. So we need to be more specific with what the tendinopathy involves. And the tendinopathy can involve tears or ruptures that we either call macro ruptures. So these ruptures are very large. If you opened the person up, you'd be able to see them with your own eyes. And then there's micro ruptures. And we're more gonna discuss the micro ruptures in this video. But before we go over there, I just wanna make sure we understand something. So if we look over here, we'll talk about this in the next video. This would be a macro rupture. You look at the Achilles tendon right there, you can see that damage with your bare eyes, okay? And if I had to grade this on the scale that we're gonna look at in the next video, I'd call this a grade two tear. The big thing I wanted to point out here is that the micro tears, you would not be able to see with your naked eye. You need to look down at the microscopic level to see those. And that's what we're gonna be talking about here in this video. So let's go and dissect these micro ruptures now, okay? So again, the micro ruptures are not visible to the naked eye. We're talking down at the collagen fiber level within the tendon. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is an Achilles tendonitis. And also, I wanna preface this. If you talk to different people within the medical and physical therapy communities, there's a lot of uh, confusion as to what constitutes a tendonitis versus a tendinosis, okay? Uh, and we're gonna differentiate those over the course of this video. So let's talk about Achilles tendonitis. They're gonna be acute cases where there's micro damage to the deeper tendon fibers. And I specify deeper here, that's important. We'll see why in just a couple of minutes. So let's talk about a typical Achilles tendonitis case. You've got a guy, he's gonna go play a pickup basketball game. He's had no prior issues with his Achilles tendon, uh, but he doesn't warm up, he doesn't really stretch, his calves are pretty tight, right? That's gonna predispose you to some kind of damage to the Achilles tendon, especially when the calves are tight. And he does pretty fine throughout the pickup game, right? But he might notice some pain in the Achilles tendon, either towards the end of the game or after the game's over. And that's because he has micro damage, micro ruptures to the Achilles tendon. And one of the hallmarks of an Achilles tendonitis is inflammation, okay? What are the cardinal signs of inflammation? Well, one is pain, but there's also warmth, there's redness, there's swelling, and the swelling could either be on the medial side of the Achilles tendon or it could be on the lateral side, okay? If somebody has quite a bit of inflammation around the Achilles tendon, and you're sure that it's not a macro tear, it's a tendonitis, not a tendinosis. Tendinoses are not gonna have a lot of inflammation, if any, okay? So that's a big thing for a tendonitis. Now this term up here, peritendinitis, what is this? This is a strange term. It has to do with what we call the peritina, okay? So some tendons, in particular in the feet, um, there's a few in the ankles, and then also in the upper extremities, like the hands, the wrist, and the elbow, those tendons have sheaths, right? The tendon itself slides in and out of the sheath as the joint moves, okay? That would be a tendon sheath, and inflammation of that would be a tenosynovitis. Now, the Achilles tendon does not have a tendon sheath, but it does have an outer layer of fibers, so superficial fibers that are slightly different constitution than the deeper fibers. And if it's the superficial tendon fibers where there's micro damage, uh, that would be damage to the Achilles tendon's peritinon, and we would term that a peritinonitis. Again, with a peritinonitis, you're also gonna have inflammation, and it's going to be acute. Now, in general, the treatment approach between these two things doesn't differ. We're gonna follow the RICE protocol. Rest, ice, compression, elevation, right? Uh, the compression and the elevation are to help get the swelling out back to the level of the heart. The ice is to control, again, that inflammation which tends to heat the tissue. 
Uh, and in terms of the rest part, we're not doing bed rest, right? We're just going to minimize and probably negate the activity that caused that inflammation of the tendon in the first place. So we'd probably say the guy can walk, but why don't you avoid basketball at least for some time until we get this inflammation under control, okay? Now, what about a tendinosis? A tendinosis is more chronic, and there can be a little bit of inflammation, but it's not gonna be as pronounced as it is in a tendonitis or a peritoneitis, okay? So in a tendinosis, the hallmark is something that you can't see. It's aberrant collagen remodeling, okay? So let's suppose we have that same guy with the Achilles tendonitis. His tendon gets better and he's now pain-free. And he goes back to playing basketball maybe a week later and he gets this again, right? He gets Achilles tendonitis, right? So it goes away and maybe he waits a month this time. He goes and does something else. Maybe he plays some baseball, has the same issue again, okay? At some point, this tendonitis kind of transitions into a tendinosis, okay? So let's go over that on the next few slides. So before we get into this cycle over here, which is more representative of a tendinosis, let's look down at the bottom right and imagine this case for a tendinitis, what might happen. So right over here on the left, you see, let's say some, not all, of the fibers of the Achilles tendon. So if we're standing, the fibers run vertically, up and down. And in this orientation, they are very strong but somebody gets some tendon micro damage, and now a portion of the Achilles tendon is damaged as you see right here. Now, if this is an Achilles tendonitis, there's gonna be pain, there's going to be inflammation, uh, but in general, the healing process will just reverse back to this, okay? If this is the first time it's happened, or like I said, if it's been a very long time since the previous Achilles tendonitis, it may go back to looking like this. However, if we're dealing more with a tendinosis, we have aberrant collagen remodeling. So again, the injury is caused by excessive tendon loading. Think back to our basketball player example in the pickup game. So excessive tendon loading causes tendon micro damage like we just saw there. And so now to repair this micro damaged area of the Achilles tendon, cells like fibroblasts here are recruited to the area via the inflammatory response. Now you said tendinosis doesn't involve inflammation, right? Well, there's a little bit. It's not a hallmark of a tendinosis. It is more pronounced in a tendinitis. Okay, so in a tendinosis, there's not gonna be a lot of inflammation, but there might be a little bit just to get these cells to the area. And so fibroblasts are cells that deposit collagen when there's a need for healing a damaged site. So we get fibroblasts recruited, they're activated, and they start laying down collagen fibers to repair this micro-damaged area of the tendon. However, when the fibroblast starts laying down the collagen here, it's not perfect. What does that mean? Well, it means that the way the collagen is deposited is not exactly like it was here in the healthy Achilles tendon before the injury. We'd like it to be, but unfortunately, it's not. If it was, well then the tendon post-injury would have 100% of the tensile strength that it had prior to the injury, but that's not what happens. Instead, the collagen that's deposited doesn't happen in this perfect vertical orientation. It might have little squiggles, little squiggles like this, and you can see that here on the next slide. And I've kind of exaggerated these squiggles here, but you can clearly tell that these fibers are not laid down exactly vertically. And do you think that this tendon right here in this region is going to be as strong as it was prior to the injury? No, it's not gonna be as strong, okay? So maybe after this fibroblast comes in here and deposits this collagen, it's not perfect, maybe the tendon in this area is down to 99% of its original strength, right? And then assuming you don't address that, person goes out and they do the same activity or a similar one that causes a similar injury here. And you have the same process that occurs over and over again. So then the tendon drops to 97% strength. And then it drops to 95. And you just keep getting this cycle over and over again. And it progressively weakers the tendon. So every time you go through this cycle, 
and these collagen fibers are deposited in an aberrant fashion, the tendon gets slightly weaker. And what this does is it creates an increased susceptibility to further damage, okay? So what do we do? We need to take these aberrant collagen fibers right here that really aren't very strong compared to the remainder of the tendon, and we need to get those fibers to be realigned like how they were in the tendon prior to any injury. So how do we do that? Well, one of the tools that a lot of clinics have is a stem. So in general, with Achilles uh, tendon pain, the side of the Achilles tendon where there's pain, either medial or lateral, is going to be where the micro tears are and likely where this aberrant collagen formation is. So if the pain is on the medial side of the Achilles tendon, that's probably where you want to A-stim, although a lot of people will A-stim both medial and lateral aspects. In general, you don't need to do it on the, the peak of the Achilles tendon posteriorly. Uh, that's because uh, micro tears are actually very uncommon there. They're usually either on the medial or lateral sides of the tendon. So essentially what the A-stim is doing is it's breaking up all of these aberrant collagen fibers that we don't really want there, which are basically just scar tissue. So breaking up scar tissue, then once we've broken it up, we give some kind of exercises after that to help realign the fibers so they're more closer to this, okay? And what's the difference between the fibers over here versus the aberrant collagen fibers? Aberrant collagen fibers, where there's more scar tissue in this disorganized fashion, they're weaker. Over here on the left, these fibers are going to be much stronger and more resistant to further exacerbations. So after we ace them, we might give some gentle stretches of the calf. So we might do the gastrocnemius, also the soleus. And then we can go through a typical progression of range of motion exercises, passive range of motion, active assistive range of motion, active range of motion, and then finally more resisted range of motion. Once we've got the fibers more like this, we can basically do the resisted range of motion to help them accept loads better. Okay, and we'll talk about that more in a future video. So now back to this. Let's suppose that you've got a patient who has pain in the Achilles tendon. They've got an Achilles tendinopathy and you've ruled out a large macroscopic tear. So it's either a tendinitis or a tendinosis. One great question to ask in your subjective is, has this same thing happened before? If they say no, and this is the first time and maybe the second time it's happened, especially if those times are quite a bit spaced out, it's likely a tendinitis. And again, remember with a true tendinitis, there's likely going to be inflammation and going along with that the four cardinal signs of inflammation. But one big thing about the tendonitis is because this is the first time it's happened or at the very least, it hasn't happened very much with large spaces in between the episodes, there's probably not gonna be a lot of aberrant collagen remodeling, okay? If the person says to that same question, yeah, this kind of happens over and over again. I have some pain, it gets better, then I do something else and I get some pain and it gets better and this cycle repeats over and over again. Well, at that point, they very likely have aberrant collagen remodeling, okay? And that would be classified as a tendinosis, okay? And when somebody has an Achilles tendinosis, more so than a tendinitis, this is where we can use the Alfredson protocol to help with uh, progressive loading and healing of the Achilles tendon. And the Alfredson protocol is something that we'll be discussing in a future video, so make sure to watch out for that. And one final note here on the Alfredson protocol. If somebody has a macro tear, so a macro rupture, which will be the topic of the next video, you would never use the Alfredson protocol. That is much too aggressive for somebody with a tear of that size. So the Alfredson protocol is going to be reserved for a tendonitis or a tendinosis, okay? And in general, with a tendonitis, if you try the Alfredson protocol on them right after they get the injury and you're still in the acute stage and there's still a lot of pain and swelling and inflammation, it might actually make it worse. If you're going to use the Alfredson protocol on a tendonitis, you need to be out of the acute stage into the subacute stage when the pain severity is much, much lower, okay? Um, and then you can also use the Alfredson protocol on the tendinosis, okay? In fact, it's actually very good for the tendinosis because it helps to kind of bust up those aberrant collagen formations and help realign new fibers 
to make the tendon much stronger so that we don't get further re-injury to it and kind of break that cycle that we were talking about on the previous slides. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.